Okay. Is everybody able to see my screen? Can you give me a thumbs up? Yes. Okay. So um, I'm Megan and this is my supervisor, um, Jessica, and I've been working with her for the past 12 weeks. I'm completing my 12 week, 12 week rotation as um, an occupational therapy graduate student. And I've been learning a lot about lymphedema um, at my time here at Balanced Therapy. So um, I just wanted to give you guys a little background on Balanced. So this is our mission statement. We knew from the start in order to meet the needs of New Mexicans, we would quite simply need to be the best at what we do. An extension of that core belief is the wide array of specialties we represent, from pediatrics to geriatrics, hand therapy to TMJ, golf swing analysis to women's health, and many more in between. Our therapies, our therapist collective knowledge and training run deep. We look forward to connecting you with precisely the right therapist to deliver the kind of expertise or expertly customized program you deserve. And then I listed some of the services we offer. So we offer occupational therapy, um, physical therapy, and what we'll be focusing on today uh, or discussing in my PowerPoint presentation is manual lymphatic drainage. And I put the address of our clinic where we're located at and the website and phone number here on the bottom left corner. Oops. So I just introduced Jessica. She's been um, a CLT since 2018 and has been a practicing OT since 2014. Stacy, she's the owner of Balanced and she's also a CLT and she has her certified hand therapist. Um, oops. She's, certif she's a certified hand therapist um, and she's been practicing since 2005. And then we also have Sherry and she's a CODA and she's been a CLT. She got certified in ACLT in 2022 and has been practicing OT since 2017. And then I just recently graduated with my master's in occupational therapy at the University of New Mexico. Uh, so some of the learning objectives Learning objectives for this presentation is to understand what is lymphedema, understand the signs and symptoms of lymphedema, identify who's at risk, and be aware of available treatment options. So what is a certified lymphedema therapist? Lymphedema specialists are healthcare professionals with expertise in diagnosing, treating, and managing lymphedema. And experts can include physicians, nurses, occupational therapists, physical therapists, and massage therapists. Um, a certified lymphedema therapist can be certified, can be LANA certified, but it's not a requirement. Um, and I just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of what their certification looks like. So they'll have classroom lectures for about one third of their instruction, and then they'll focus on lab instruction, focusing on the skills necessarily to effectively treat lymphedema. And um, whether or not you're, you're LANA certified, you still have to pass a written and hands-on examination. So what is the role of occupational therapy in lymphedema treatment? I just wanted to give you guys a general definition of what occupational therapists do. So occupational therapists are healthcare professionals that work with people of all ages and abilities. They help people regain, develop, and build skills that are essential for independent functioning, health and well-being in the home and community. And they have unique expertise in evaluating participation and, and enabling the performance of meaningful occupations. And occupations are activities that people of all ages need and want to do. So they can be um, things that, like making meals, dressing, driving, playing, or caring for family members and pets. The role of OT in lymphedema treatment. So OTs help to prevent or minimize fluid accumulation in the affected body parts. They help protect the affected body parts from additional injury. Um, we help to restore any lost function. They can provide education and support the performance of activity. So, um, for example, they may suggest some conservative energy techniques or a way to modify activities to prevent an increase of symptoms or prevent injury. Um, we do bandage training with specialized lymphedema bandages and supplies. Um, they'll complete manual lymph drainage and teach you how to um, do MLD. Um, we'll teach you about home exercise programs. We can also measure and fit 
compression garments and teach you how to put them on and determine how often you should wear them. Um, we can adapt daily activities. So like dressing, cooking, or driving to make those a little bit easier for you. And then we can also recommend changes to the environment to support um, your ability to get around. Um, this is just, I wanted to throw this in there because it's, it's for occupational therapy interventions and lymphedema treatment. And to basically kind of summarize what these um, reviews concluded was that management of lymphedema, that um, occupational therapy, so the benefit of OT in lymphedema management, um, they found overall improvements in patient symptoms, um, total girth reductions, so that means reducing the size of the limb. Um, they found decreased pain in correlation with reduced size, um, improved physical functions, as well as psychological and social components of mood and quality of life. So things. And now to understand what is the lymphatic system. So the lymphatic system is responsible for supporting our immune system and circulatory system. Um, it runs in parallel to the circulatory system, but it has its own structures. And it is responsible for collecting excess fluid from the body's tissues and return it back into these collecting ducts, which then um, co connect to our circulatory system. And it'll um, what it does is it helps filter through waste, so that way our body can flush it out through our urinary, through our um, urinary, or through um, through poop or bowel movements. Um, and it's made the lymph fluid is made up of proteins, water, waste, and product from the body's tissue, and it's colorless. And yeah. So some of the main functions of the lymphatic system is that it's part of your immune system and it helps protect your body from infection and foreign invaders. It helps to maintain fluid levels in your body. And if it didn't do that, then our blood pressure could drop and we could um, pass out. It helps to absorb fats from the digestive tract and it transports and removes waste product and abnormal cells. So we have a superficial lymphatic system and a deep lymphatic system. The superficial lymphatic system air has vessels and nodes that are located superficial to the skin. So we have our axillary lymph nodes, which are located in our armpits, and those are responsible for filtering fluid from our, um, from our chest. And then our inguinal lymph nodes are responsible for filtering fluid from our lower body. And then we have our deep lymphatic system, which is more um, located deeper in the deeper tissues of the body and more centrally. And we have some key areas. So you have your supraclavicular and deep cervical lymph nodes, which are located along your collarbone and your neck. And those are often the ones that you feel when you get sick and they kind of feel hard here under your chin. And then we have our deep abdominal nodes, and those help to connect our lower and upper lymphatic system. So I kind of wanted to summarize the main parts of the lymphatic system. So we have lymphatic fluid, which I mentioned earlier is just that collection of extra fluid from our body's tissues. And it's made up of proteins, fats, minerals, nutrients, damaged cells. Um, it can also be cancer and other foreign invaders. And it also plays a key role in transporting white blood cells, which help um, protect our body from infection. And then we have lymph nodes, and those are those bean-shaped glands that filter out substances that travel through the limb. Um, there are approximately five to 700 lymph nodes located throughout our body. And they also produce and store lymphocytes, which are white blood cells that fight infection and diseases. And the lymph nodes are our main source of filtering. So any fluid that goes through there, the lymph nodes are going to catch it and they're going to filter it out. And they're found in those key areas in the head, neck, armpits, abdomen, groin, and behind our knees. And then we have our organs of the immune system. So lymphatic tissues and organs that produce, store, and carry white blood cells that fight infections and diseases. And so it can include... Um, organs like the spleen, the thymus, your tonsils, and then um, bone marrow. So if there's any kind of dysfunction um, at your lymph nodes, what, 
we would want to do is reroute the fluid to other vessels so that way it can collect it and soak it up so that way it's not staying like stagnant in one area. So we can kind of think of our lymphatic system as a sink. Our lymphatic fluid would be the fluid. And if there's if we have a clogged drain, well, then the, the water has no place to go. So it's just going to stay in your sink. And the job as a lymphedema therapist is to come in and find a working drain per se, or fix the plumbing to make to reroute that fluid elsewhere. So what is lymphedema? Lymphedema is the abnormal buildup of protein-rich fluid in your tissues, and it occurs when your lymphatic system isn't working well, usually because your lymph nodes were damaged or removed as a result of cancer or surgery. And it can cause abnormal swelling in part of your body, but it usually occurs in your arm or your leg. And then there's two types of lymphedema. There's primary and secondary. Um, most people um, that are attending today will experience secondary lymphedema as primary lymphedema is generally occurs from hereditary or genetic abnormalities, which causes malformation to the lymphatic system. Um, it can be present at birth, develop at puberty, or even begin to show signs in adulthood. And it'll typically involve both legs and affects women more than men. Whereas secondary lymphedema is a result of damage to or removal of a section of the lymphatic system. And some of the common causes in the United States um, is cancer and treatments of cancer, um, trauma, so falls, car wrecks, surgery to other areas for other conditions. Um, and it can include edema that is acute or chronic, um, can be caused by infections or cellulitis obesity or other health problems, and dependent positioning or paralysis. And then, so this is an important slide here that we wanted you guys to really focus on is the signs and symptoms of lymphedema because um, early intervention is best to prevent it from progressing on to later, later stages and where it may not be um, reversible. So swelling in part of the body, so you can experience this in your breasts, um, on your chest, on your underarm, or any of the other areas where those lymph nodes were removed or damaged, and that's because that fluid has nowhere else to go. Um, your skin appearance, it may your skin may start to feel tight or hard. It can change texture. It can look red or hot or feel hot to the touch, and that's... Um, it's important to look out for because that means you're on the verge of cellulitis and you should contact your doctor. Um, you can experience pitting of the skin where you can go and you can press, like if you press your skin, it'll leave an indentation of your finger. Um, the area affected may feel heavy or full and you can also experience sensations such as aching, numbness or tingling because of all that extra fluid is um, compressing your nerves. Um, you might experience less movement or flexibility of nearby joints. Your clothing and jewelry may start to fit more tightly. Um, you may also experience leakage of clear odorless fluid, and that's because your skin has stretched so far to the point where it can't accompany any more fluid. So the fluid is just going to take its easiest way out and it'll break through your skin. Um, and then you might have skin discoloration or loss of hair in the bald area and you may experience frequent infections. So if you notice any of the symptoms, please let your doctor know because you may benefit from a referral to a lymphedema specialist. And then we have stages of lymphedema. So stage zero would be, um, this is the very beginning and this is the best time to start a preventative program. So that's when you start to feel those sensations of fullness, heaviness, aching, or tenseness. And then stage one is acute lymphedema. So swelling is reversible in the involved area. So you may see that your um, swelling will go down with like elevation, whether you're elevating your legs or your arms. Um, the area may start to feel like soft and you might see those pitting or indentations. Um, stage two is chronic lymphedema. So you'll start to see those significant differences between sides, kind of like this picture here. You can see that her right arm is um, visibly, visibly different than her left. Um, 
you can see that the tissue will may start to feel hard in the beginning of fibrosis. And that's because that fluid isn't moving. It's kind of staying stuck in that one area. Um, you'll start to notice the skin changes. Um, symptoms kind of say the same throughout this, the fullness, heaviness, aching pain, tenseness, and pins or needles. And then stage three, that's where you really see that elevation is kind of no longer working to reduce the edema. Um, your area has marked fibrosis and hardening of the skin, so it's not really um, movable anymore. Um, and then your skin changes will be like more severe, so you'll start to see wounds or bumps, and you may even experience leakage of lymph fluid, which is that clear fluid that I was talking about earlier. Um, you may start to see fungal infections, distortions of the limbs, normal shape, and infection or cellulitis. Um, so as you can see, it kind of develops in a progressive uh, manner from mild to severe. So that's why um, we're here today. So that way we can hopefully educate you guys and others on uh, how important it is to be aware of these signs and symptoms. So that way we can get an early jump on it. So how does the lymphatic system relate to breast cancer? Um, I found some facts here that I thought were really interesting. I said that women treated for breast cancer often report being unaware that lymphedema was a possible outcome of cancer treatment. It says that 3% of women with sentinel lymph node biopsies and 20% of those who have axillary lymph node dissection may develop lymphedema at 12 months following breast cancer surgery. And then it says 40% of women treated for breast cancer are at a lifetime risk for developing lymphedema. And Jessica had shared a story that um, even if you are outside and you're doing gardening work and you cut yourself with your rose bush or something that it can trigger lymphedema. So that's why you're at a lifetime risk. And it's important to be aware of um, treating infections and small wounds. Um, they found that early identification of lymphedema is believed to yield better patient outcomes. And recent research in Alberta suggests that one in five people will develop cording after breast cancer surgery. So the lymphatic system, um, the spread of breast cancer is sometimes predictable. So most often it will spread from the tumor to surrounding lymph nodes before sp spreading throughout the body. And the sentinel node is the first node to show evidence of breast cancer if it were to travel downstream from the breast tumor and into the lymphatic system. Um, so a sentinel node biopsy is the procedure that is used to examine lymph nodes closest to the tumors, um, as it's likely that that's where the cancer is spread and surgeons will either inject dye or radioactive substances into the tumor or nearby tissues to determine if the cancer has, felt, um, cancer has spread to nearby lymph nodes. And then that's when the nearest lymph nodes will re be removed and checked for cancer. And when and that may cause lymphatic dysfunction and put you at risk for lymphedema. Um, auxiliary lymph node dissection, um, that's when they take out that first lymph node there um, that has the presence of cancer. And they're lo usually located in your underarm. Um, individuals who have lymph node dissection are at a higher risk for lymphedema because the surgery removes the majority of lymph nodes located under the arm. And then radiation and chemotherapy um, puts you at an increased risk for lymphedema as scar tissue, direct radiation therapy to the underarm, and placement for intravenous the chemotherapy and weight gain as a result of chemotherapy may damage lymph nodes and interfere with lymphatic flow by pressing on and narrowing the lymphatic vessels. Um, so we had a case where we were lucky to kind of intervene before any before the patient had received any of these treatments and she had asked Jessica like should that, that she had stated that the doctor suggested that she should get a um, majority of the lymph nodes removed under her arm under uh, under her underarm and she asked Jessica if that was a good idea and we suggested that it wasn't and to um what's the word that I'm looking spare. for? And to spare as many lymph nodes as possible to kind of avoid that lymph node dysfunction and um, so that way it doesn't get disrupted. Um, auxiliary web syndrome is also a result um, that can, or something that can occur after surgery or radiation. 
and it's also called cording, tethering, or banding. And it can happen in the arm, armpit, trunk, or breast. And you can see this picture here that you'll see like thick or thin bands of cords, which may run down the arm. And sometimes they can go all the way from the base of the, from the arm all the way to the base of the thumb. And they can also um, cause pain, making it difficult to reach, lift your arm or straighten your elbow. Um, they haven't really found a cause for the cording, but they suspect that it may be caused by lymph or blood vessels that become inflamed after they're damaged by a breast surgery or cancer treatment. So what are goals for treatment? So if you were to come to us for lymphedema therapy, we would provide education on lymphedema risks and precautions to prevent or limit future occurrences or worsening of the current condition. Um, we'd help to improve the health of the tissues and involved um, until wounds, if necessary. We'll help decrease swelling of the affected body part, um, which is the reduction phase, and to help you achieve a normal shape and skin features. Um, we can also direct you to certain companies here in Albuquerque. That way you can obtain a pneumatic pressure garment and pump, um, which can sometimes be covered by insurance. Um, and this will help you to maintain um, the success of treatment. So keep the total reduced size of your limb. And then we can provide education to the person and or their family on how to manage the condition and to become an advocate for their own health. So we'll teach you how to perform self MLD daily because um, once you have come here and you've been here for a while and we've reduced your swelling and the goals have been met, you have to work on managing the condition on your own as there's no cure for lymphedema and it's a chronic condition. Um, so I wanted to show this picture because I thought it was um, important how lymphedema is an ongoing process so in phase one, we're doing decongestion and we're helping to reduce your size of the limb. But in phase two, you're also doing all of the same things to maintain your current size. So I thought this was a really good picture to show that it just doesn't stop here at phase one and um, the work doesn't end after therapy. Um, so treatment for breast cancer related lymphedema, the gold standard right now is complete um, decongestive therapy, and it has five pillars of treatment. So manual lymph drainage um, that also consists of compression bandaging and for garments of the involved area, education on skincare and precautions. Um, we'll provide you with those lymphatic exercises with compression and then self-management or a home program. We can help you develop that. Um, so what is manual lymph drainage? Manual lymph drainage is a specialized form of massage that stimulates the lymphatic system to improve its ability to absorb and transport fluid. It uses a specific light stretch of tissue that helps promote the movement of lymphatic fluid from a damaged or congested area to an area with functioning lymph nodes. So rerouting it so that way it can be absorbed by nearby lymph nodes that are functioning properly. Um, there's often a misconception that Manual lymph drainage is the same as massage therapy, and it's not. The types of strokes used in massage are generally applied with more pressure than um, manual lymph drainage techniques, and massage strokes are not limited to superficial tissues, but um, they will go in deeper areas such as your muscles, tendons, and ligaments. And they also found that an increased edema can also um, may result as a, uh, may result from traditional massage techniques. So some of the benefits of MLD is that lymph normally moves at a rate of 10 to 12 beats per minute, but with MLD, it is increased to 100 to 120 beats per minute. So it means that it's really getting that fluid moving. Um, it helps to reduce edema. It'll help you to improve joint mobility and range of motion, um, pain relief by relieving fluid, pressure on nerves. So you're not getting that numbness or tingling anymore. It can help stimulate your immune function. It can offer headache relief and relieve sinus congestion. Um, it can minimize scarring and connective tissue adhesions. So like the axillary web um, scarring and then accelerate the healing time of wounds and burns. And then I wanted to kind of briefly describe some of the treatments for um, that we do offer. So bandages, um, we can apply multiple layers of bandages 
to the affected area to create greater pressure to improve the lymphatic flow. Um, it's advised to avoid bandaging yourself without a doctor or lymphedema specialist as it make, make your condition worse. Um, there's things such as foam pads and chip bags that your lymphedema specialist may recommend, and it helps to break down and soften those areas that are affected by lymphedema. So like the fibrotic um, tissue that I was talking about earlier, that's really hard and it, you just stop moving. Um, it'll help soften that so that way fluid can pass through. And then arm elevation, that's something that you can do is prop your arms on a pillow on a slant so that your hand is above your wrist and your elbow is higher than your shoulder. And then there's compre compression sleeves and garments. Compression sleeves and garments are made of stretch fabric and apply pressure to the arm, hand, or trunk to improve lymphatic flow. So bandages are mainly used in that reduction phase. So when you're initially reducing the limb size, and then compression sleeves and garments are gonna help you maintain that size. Um, exercise and aquatics. So gentle stretching and exercise can help the lymphatic system to flow more effectively because when you're exercising, it kind of, it pumps and it helps move that fluid up. Um, and then they found that hydrostatic pressure from the water provides compression to the areas that are underneath. And it's a great way for individuals to exercise with less strain. Um, we can also apply kinesio tape because it can mimic the effect of manual lymph drainage by stimulating the movement of the lymph fluid by stretching the skin wherever it's applied. Um, there's also, they also found that weight loss can help you reduce lymphedema symptoms. And it's suggested that you ask your doctor or lymphedema specialist for safe exercises or consult a nutritionist for advice on a healthy and balanced diet. And then pneumatic pumps, which I mentioned earlier, can help you maintain your um, girth size. Um, they're a machine that has an inflatable sleeve or garment that's attached to it. And the pump has multiple chambers that inflate to stimulate lymphatic flow in the right direction. And they even have some that will do that graded pressure where it'll start by clearing the lymph nodes that are closest to, um, to your body up here, and then it'll work its way down. And then it'll come from um, more the end of your limb and work its way back up to push the fluid back. And then um, this is our contact information. Again, if any of you guys need it. And um, thank you for your attention. My resources. Does anybody have any questions for us? I have a question, but I was <clears throat> waiting to see if anybody else wanted to jump in. But um, my question would be, have you, once you see the early signs of lymphedema and you've got the swelling, have you ever seen that kind of reverse back to normal so that it no longer becomes an issue? Like, so for example, I'm three months out, well, almost four months out from radiation. So followed by, so I had chemo, lymph node removal, and then radiation. And so my doctor seems to think that it will kind of normalize and reduce, but I'm just wondering what your experience is with that. So are you saying that um, you have been diagnosed with it or you just have some swelling afterwards and haven't necessarily been diagnosed? Sorry. No, I have been diagnosed. Okay. Um, from my experience, no, it doesn't. Um, reduce on its own. And so that's why you need a certified lymphedema therapist or at least the products that we recommended um, during this presentation to help with that. Gotcha. And then um, I've been looking in a lot into a lot lately, the um, lymphovenous bypass surgery. And I was just wondering if you have had anybody go through that and had a successful outcome? Good question. To my knowledge, there's only three or four surgeons in the U.S. right now doing that. Um, so I have not had a patient who has had it, but I hear very good things about it being very successful. So this is Kariba. Um, my plastic surgeon at Ohio State University, where I did my double mastectomy, he's well known and uh, renowned for that procedure. His name is Dr. Skaraki. That's in Columbus, Ohio, if you're willing to travel. 
Very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would absolutely be willing to travel if, you know, if that was something that I, that, you know, I've also been hearing that there's a lot of success. I also know that, you know, like you had said, there's not a lot of surgeons that do it right now, but I feel like it gives us hope that it, that there is potentially a, well, I won't say cure, but you know, that, that there is some possibility that that could improve and it's not something that you have to manage so heavily over your lifetime, I guess. Agreed. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Mary Dell, you, you're muted, Mary. This is Allison. Can you unmute yourself? Thank you. Of course. Sorry. A year and a half after my surgery, my hand and arm swelled. Mm -hmm. I have an appointment, but not for another three weeks. So I've just been trying to do manual drainage swimming and using my pneumatic pump the swelling is less than it was um, but, my, but my skin is looking pretty awful i see that your so what i would recommend is find an oil-based product um, and I say that because um, I first started as a CLT in the Midwest, so I always would say oil-based lotion, but once I moved here to New Mexico, people use a lot of different products, um, including grapeseed oil, um, olive oil, so whatever you want to use an oil-based product that's moisturizing to the skin, I would love for you to apply that at least once daily, um, because your skin is being asked to stretch and contract all the time all day while your fluid changes. And so those many layers of skin need to be moisturized so that they can do their job and take care of you and keep everything inside. If they're not and they get dry um, and then you swell quite a bit, they're gonna open up and that's when you're at risk for having the fluid come out the skin, okay? so. That's one of the first things that I go over in my evaluation is I want you to find an oil-based product and put it on at least daily. More if you are itchy. Okay. Any other words of wisdom to get me through the next three weeks? Um, try to elevate when you can. So throw your arm up across the passenger seat if you're driving, if that's the same side, the correct side. Mm -hmm. um, and um, because we use our arms and hands a lot, um, if you're sitting bent, you might be accumulating more below the bend. So just try to get a short stretch on the skin, pulling that fluid up, up into the body. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Yeah, looking forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think Stacy put in the chat the address and the contact information for Balanced. And I can also email Allison the PowerPoint slide if you guys ever want to reference it. That would be great, Megan. Thank you. Fariba, I saw that you were unmuted. Do you have a question? Oh, not really, but okay. uh, so I'm gonna be having um, lymph node removal next week. And then after that, I'm gonna be for sure having radiation and possibly chemo. And they told me there are like pretty high chances for getting lymphedema, like one in three or something like that. So this was informative. I'm glad they told you. Yeah. <laughs> 
I have that's cool. um, some people who come in and say, I wish I would have found you 20 years ago. No, oh, well. so we're just trying to get the word out and get treatment as soon as possible rather than, you know, more things happen. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is Allison. I have a quick question just because it's something that um, people ask me a lot and I wanna make sure that I'm informing them correctly. I usually of course say, have you contacted your lymphedema specialist or, you know, spoke with your medical team? Um, but it was something certainly I was thinking about too, traveling across the world, right? Is um, what are good in the way of preventative measures and when to use them, i.e. wearing a compression sleeve when you're changing altitudes or flying or um, you know, taking a road trip across the country. Um, and I never know exactly what the best way to sort of direct people is. I wonder if you guys could weigh in on that. That's a great question. And yes. I think everyone needs to know. So um, whether or not you are having um, significant or insignificant swelling, okay, even if you have a chance for lymphedema because you've had node removal or radiation or surgery, I like to tell my patients that you should have a sleeve, a compression sleeve, and put it on when you go up in elevation, meaning airplane or mountains, okay, over 10,000 feet. Um, then, um, stay away from heat sources. Okay. Hot springs, saunas, um, hot tubs. Okay. Um, that will make you swell more. Now, if you're bound to do it and that includes hot yoga too, that will make you swell. <laughs> um, but if you are absolutely like determined that you want to do that. That's when I try to work with my patients and say, okay, what well, maybe we get you a sleeve and you just wear the sleeve during the heat. Um, but if you know the risks, then we can work on it on the backside and um, do more preventative and things afterwards to get back to a stable level instead of increasing with edema. And then we want to get back down to where you were instead of going up and staying up there if that makes sense. Um, um, what else am I forgetting, Megan? Sodium, I guess their diet changes too, so. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, another thing I like to educate is increased nutrients in the body, such as sodium or MSG or things like that, that the body doesn't need, it kicks out to the lymphatic system. And so if you've got extra sodium, going throughout the body, throughout the lymphatic system, uh, it can make you swell. Um, and then if your system isn't working correctly, then that swelling can get stuck. Um, and then that girth just gets bigger. I would also say, and Jess, I don't know, you can jump in for car rides. I would think the biggest risk are people with lower extremity lymphedema. And that is if you are gonna be in a car or sitting in a dependent position, even office workers, you wanna be having some kind of compression on your lower extremities as well. In addition to taking frequent rest breaks and being able to walk or just move your body so that um, you can get that muscle pump going to create a natural uh, movement of the lymphatic fluid as well. But yes. even if you're sitting in a car and you have upper extremity lymphedema, like that's when you want to be cognizant of like, hey, every half hour I'm going to do just gentle active range of motion while I'm sitting in the car if I'm the passenger. Exactly. And that's what our home exercise program will include. Um, I like to tell people in the first visit that we will teach you a home exercise program, but I don't want to get anyone scared. It's not anything strenuous. It's things that you can do while sitting down or things mm -hmm. that you can do in the pool and then take those exercises that you learn in the pool, which we have here at Balanced and take those exercises and then um, do them on land. Um, so yes, when you're in a car taking a six hour trip or something, you want, you can sit there and um, pedal your ankles. Uh, back and forth and kick out your knees back and forth. Um, and we'll teach you how to do that in a sequential manner so that it's pushing the fluid in the correct direction. Yeah. And we do have, we do offer aquatic therapy at balance and we have a wonderful therapist over there 
who is not a CLT, but has worked with lymphatic therapists for a lot of years. And we've actually teamed up with her and created like an exercise program in the pool for our lymphatic patients. And I know we have a couple of people that we're doing this with now where like Jessica will bandage them. They'll go home for two days and they'll go to the pool, pick off all their bandages, do their limb, do their exercises in the pool, come right back, see Jessica. She does MLD and rebandages. So we've kind of created this partnership so that we can create a greater overarching plan of care and get people reduced as quick as possible. Mm -hmm. I know Thank me you. and Jessica are big fans of the pool for lymphatic patients. We like that. Yeah. And it's nice and warm and indoor. So yes, <laughs> it's 92 degrees. <laughs> so it's not too warm to create swelling, but warm enough that you want to go in on a cold day like today. Mm -hmm. Thank you, that was very helpful. I know Mary has a question, but I actually was hoping Mary would ask you guys specifically, um, what, Mary, what type of uh, Medicare you have, just to confirm, and, and then how we get someone like Mary, who I know is interested in coming to see you guys, how we get her set up sooner than later, um, so that you know she can get in and start receiving your wonderful care. That's not the question I was gonna ask. <laughs> I didn't figure, but I thought I'd layer with that as well. Okay. My question is my PCP, because I was having foot cramps before all this started, told me I'm supposed to be drinking water with salt in it twice a day. And now you're telling me that excess salt could be dangerous because of my lymphedema. How will I know how much salt? My blood work showed that I was low on sodium and low on chloride. Okay. The American Heart Association um, recommends a low salt diet of um, 2000 uh, milligrams of sodium. Okay. And so you have to take into consideration that um, a population with heart problems may also have a more sedentary lifestyle um, because they can't get up and use a lot of energy. Okay. So let's take that into consideration for anyone who experiences lymphedema. And when I say a low salt diet, I want you to track it and see how much sodium you're getting per day. And so you can find that on um, the box or ingredients that you're using and how much salt you're putting in your water. And so I wouldn't want you to go much over that 2000 milligrams per day. Okay. I think a lot of people now, especially with um, fast food and restaurants are getting well over 3000 per day. Um, and that can cause a lot of excess swelling um, and, and m many more things, but that's what I would recommend is that you stick around is around 2000 and not much less and not much higher. So give or take about 200. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for asking that clarification question. And Mary, did we answer your question about insurance and getting on the schedule and that that question did we answer that for you well i have an appointment um i think there wasn't a problem with my insurance medicare has been paying i have seen five lymphedema therapists so far okay nobody's told me what i've learned in the last few minutes don't get me started <laughs> That's the, um, not the first time that I've heard that. And I'm looking forward to you coming into the clinic. I'm sorry that you have, have dealt with that so far. We do take all Medicare programs. And I, one of the things that I always, I hear that too from other people. And one thing I always like to clarify is like, if you're going to like a press or UNM, they have bottom lines and board of directors and people they have to uh, answer to and have profit shares for. 
At Balanced, the owners are all local. Um, I'm one of the owners, but um, all our owners are local and they're all therapists. And so we got into this not to be millionaires. We got into this because we were tired of working at systems where we had to see maybe two patients an hour or maybe three patients an hour. And so when you have three patients sitting in front of you, it's very hard to give quality care. And one thing we do at Balance is we see one patient per hour. So you get a full hour with your therapist, one-on-one, -on -one, nobody else is there. You're not being seen by a tech or an unlicensed professional. Um, and so I don't really blame other therapists maybe for not providing that education. I blame the system. I think therapists in their heart want to provide good quality of care. They just don't always get the opportunity to do it based on where they work. Hi, my name is Veronica. Quick question. So then do you require a referral from a doctor? We do, yes. Because we're occupational therapists in this state, we require a referral to see anyone. But Generally, oncologists or even a primary care doesn't really have a problem writing a referral to see us. At least that's Thank what you. I found. Well, yeah, I don't think there's a problem. It's just a matter of, you know, then you have to, I don't know, I have a unique situation, but <laughs> I was just curious. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Veronica, this is Allison. Do you want to share any more about your situation? Do you think that any more insight could be helpful? Or are you feeling pretty good where you're at? Um, well, no, I, I'll share. So I'm one of those that um, the lymphedema, I'm two years out from breast cancer surgery and all that. Um, and I'm one of those that by sitting for 30 to 45 minutes, I start to feel the swelling in my chest and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've recently started aquatic therapy at and I didn't realize you guys had aquatic therapy, but I start, started at someplace else. And I seem to find that that's been beneficial. Um, so that's been helping. I think it's been helping. I would like to think it's helping, but I am, I do a lot of uh, road trips. And so I'm having to wear all the compression garments, you know, compression camisole. I put on the sleeve, I put a swell spot. I put <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. I'm as I even am using compression socks. And so, yeah, I'm doing all of that. But it seems to me that, and I have a compression pump, <laughs> but it seems that the aquatic therapy seems to, to be helping, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. But it's good to know that there are other alternatives uh, as to where to go for aquatic therapy. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. I mean, me and Jess were really, we're big aquatic people for lymphedema. I just think it's one of the best things you can do with the hydrostatic pressure. If you just get in the pool and walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it took two years for somebody to suggest aquatic therapy, but <laughs> finally. Yeah, Thank I you. would agree. I mean, I've been going through um, with seeing a PT for my lymphedema for months now, and that was never suggested. So that's, that's interesting too. Cause I, you know, I feel like everything else was, um, but I, um, one question I have is that I have was wearing a compression sleeve and then found that. So in the last, like maybe three weeks, my hand has swollen. And I'm wondering if the compression sleeve is like contributing to the swelling in my hand. And even though I was sized for it and measured and whatnot, I don't know if you've seen that before. It can be a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably need to ask you some more questions and, and see what's going on and see the fit of your uh, garment uh, to really determine that. But um, it is a possibility, yes. Okay. And then I guess the only other thing I'll offer is um, I've sort of like, it kind of comes and goes and I can't, I have not yet quite figured out what, is super helpful long, you know, over like weeks versus it's like, I'll have a good week and then I have a bad week. Um, mm -hmm. But I did get a vibration plate and I wasn't so certain that it would be very helpful because the lymphedema is in my arm and I stand on it, but I have been using it for the past few days and 
I think um, I'm seeing the less swelling in my hand. So I don't know, that's a, maybe that's an option for others too. Um, yes, actually, I'm glad you brought that up because we've been implementing a rebounder in part of our home exercise program. And so that's a, that's a mini trampoline that you can get that also has the same effects as, or similar effects as a vibration plate. And so what it's doing in both situations is um, getting things jostled around, the fluid jostled around that's static, um, that's staying in the limb and where you're experiencing a lot of fluid not moving. And so it's jostling that around, trying to get it loose, okay? And then if you were to elevate while you're doing either one of those, vibration plate or rebounder, that will help drain out of the limb and back into your system so that you can um, get rid of it. Um, there's also a few techniques that you can use um, with placing your hand, your other hand, in an area of concern while you're on the vibration plate or the rebounder, and it'll help get that short stretch across the skin and will help it direct the fluid where you want it. So, you know, you're, you'll be sitting on the vibration plate and just put your hand here and it'll get you moving and this hand will go like this across the skin. So it'll be very similar to that manual lymph drainage technique. So, so try those two couple of things while you're doing the vibration plate. And so, Thank you, Carrie, that's very helpful. Mm -hmm. Carrie, I don't know, do you also wear a gauntlet with your sleeve? I did, um, and then it seemed to like push it into my fingers. And so, yeah, it was just sort of like, and so for the, I haven't worn it for the last two days. And with, like you said, getting on the vibration plate and then I was elevating my arm a little bit, but I'll also try what you had just suggested. That's seemed to help because my, it's my, you know, my hand has now been much less swollen than it had previously, so. Good. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, this is very helpful. Great information. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are asking good questions. <laughs> yeah, Mary. I am unmuted. <clears throat> Just a minute. The woman who is hosting this meeting <laughs> at Pink Warrior Allison. House, whose name? Allison. Allison. There we go. Thank I'm Mary. You. It's Allison. I remember my name today. It's a good day. <laughs> Allison <laughs> gave loan some word, several compression sleeves, and I started wearing them. I had one I was wearing during the day, and one I was wearing at night but they end in the middle of the upper arm. And then mm -hmm. I had pain right here where it ended. And I mm -hmm. stopped wearing it because it was painful up there. And I figured that it was just causing the lymph to pool where it shouldn't. You're exactly right. That's what was happening. Um, because the lymph nodes for the arm are mostly in the armpit and whether or not they're there, we want that sleeve to be as close to the armpit as possible so that you prevent that, what I call as a mushrooming effect um, mm -hmm. because the fluid isn't pushed up high enough to those nodes for the nodes to get it flowing back into the body. And then they kind of that, so that fluid stays, doesn't quite get there. It's about, you know, like an inch or however far down your compression sleeve is and the fluid just stays there instead of getting to that node all the way. So that's kind of what was happening in your situation. Um, so when you put on that garment, the first thing I want you to do is try to get it as close to your armpit as possible. Okay. Anything else the next three weeks? Mm -hmm. I'm saying I just gave up using it because it, it didn't seem to be working. Yeah, that makes sense. I would have done the same thing um, because especially if it's causing you pain, um, I don't want things to cause you pain, um, but if you get tenderness, that is what I wanna hear in our sessions um, because that tells me where you have some stagnant fluid and then I need to find um, a little bit further 
upward on the pattern towards your body where that clog is happening because the stagnant fluid starts to feel tender, but that's not where the problem is. The problem is up higher. And so that's, that's a good indicator for me to figure out where the clog is. Um, so okay. one thing I wanted to tell you um, that Megan brought up is um, in the next three weeks, I want you, when you wear the garment, try to get out all the wrinkles. Okay. So any okay. garment you wear, whether that's legs, arms, anything, if you get wrinkles in your garment, um, it's acting like a tourniquet in that area because you'll have um, more fabric in that area than you would right. need. And it's adding double the compression. Okay. Right. So it's not letting the fluid go up into the body like it should return. Um, right. That also goes for um, a lot. I see a lot of people will fold over the top of socks, um, compression socks, and that acts as a tourniquet as well. So it doesn't <laughs> let the fluid flow. And so yes. what I talk about patients a lot is every time you go to the bathroom, get your wrinkles out of your socks or compression garment. Okay. So just meaning regularly check throughout the day and get it nice and smooth, no wrinkles. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if nobody has any other questions, I just wanted to take a minute to thank Stacy and Jessica and Megan for being with us. Um, sorry for me, it's the morning, but this evening in New Mexico and, um, and sharing your wealth of knowledge and being another resource for our warriors. It really is so important and um, we're grateful to have you guys and we'll continue to, to send people your way um, as the questions arise. So again, thank you for your time and knowledge and sharing it with us. Thank you for letting us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that, um, you know, we, we do at least one lecture a month as an ongoing thing. And, um, and we do duplicate topics throughout the year because we're constantly getting new warriors into our fold. Um, and so if you're amenable, you know, whether it's on a quarterly or by yearly basis, we'd love to have you back to present again. Um, because well, the having this video on our private YouTube channel is really helpful for people. It doesn't allow them to ask their own questions. So um, if that's something you guys would be open to, we'd certainly welcome you back in the future. We'd love to. Yeah, that would be lovely. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Enjoy your evening.